understanding how temperature affects relative humidity using cake. So say you have a piece of cake and a bodybuilder and a little girl. You could easily say that these two have very different stomach sizes. Now, if each of them were to eat the same whole piece of cake, how full do you think they would be? Would they be the same fullness or different? Probably not the same. The bodybuilder could eat several more slices of cake, but the little girl would be full after that same slice. The bodybuilder and the little girl have different capacities for cake. In this analogy, the piece of cake is like the water in the air. The amount of cake consumed did not change. It was the same or constant. Continuing with the analogy, warmer air is like the bodybuilder. Just like how the bodybuilder can eat more cake, warmer air can hold more water. They have a higher capacity. That one piece of cake only made the bodybuilder about 20% full. This means that cooler air then is like the little girl. The little girl can eat less cake, just like how cooler air can hold less water. They each have a lower capacity. That same piece of cake caused the little girl to be 90% full. When the amount of water in the air does not change, the relative humidity percent will increase when the temperature gets cooler and it will decrease when the temperature gets warmer. This is just like how the fullness percent, if you will, increased when the little girl ate the cake and decreased when the bodybuilder ate the cake. The capacity for warm and cool air to hold water is different. This diagram created by the Image Permanence Institute shows how the temperature of the air, shown at the top, affects its capacity to hold water. See how the cylinder size increases as temperature increases? The cool 55 degree air has a lower capacity, like the little girl, and the warm 80 degree air has a higher capacity, like the bodybuilder. Now, just like how the bodybuilder and the little girl ate the same amount of cake, the volume of water in the air is the same for each temperature. Just changing the temperature alone does not change how much water is present in the air. When the two diagrams are combined, we can visualize how that same volume of water fills each of the different cylinders. Just like how the little girl was 90% full from that same amount of cake, the air at 55 degrees is full, it is at capacity. When the air is warmed to 60 degrees, there's a little bit more room left at the top of the cylinder. It has a slightly higher capacity to hold water. The air is 84% saturated with water, or we could say that the relative humidity at 60 degrees is 84%. And as we continue increasing the temperature, and the capacity of those cylinders increases, the water fills those cylinders less and less. At 65 degrees, the relative humidity is down to 70%. And as we increase the temperature, the relative humidity decreases until we're at a toasty 80 degrees with a 42% relative humidity. Now, the bodybuilder was 20% full, so you could say that his capacity to hold cake or water is even greater.
When you cannot control the amount of moisture in your space or spaces, you can change the temperature to change the relative humidity. Missouri summers are hot and the humidity is high. Without removing any moisture from the air, cooling to 65 degrees with this volume of water present would cause the relative humidity to be quite high, as we can see in the diagram with the two cylinders. Cooling to 70 degrees instead would lower the humidity because the warmer air has a greater capacity to hold water. So we can see that same amount of moisture takes up less space at 70 degrees than it does at 65 degrees. The same concept applies for winters when it's cold and the humidity is low. Heating the air to 75 degrees would drive the humidity way down, well below what the already low outdoor humidity is. Heating to only 68 degrees instead would keep that relative humidity slightly higher because cooler air has a lower capacity to hold water. And so if you can visualize it, that same amount of moisture would take up more space at 68 degrees, giving a higher humidity percent than it would at 75. Knowing how temperature can affect relative humidity matters. When the amount of moisture cannot be controlled, small temperature changes can keep relative humidity somewhat more stable. Those changes could be the difference that keep humidity from going above 50 or 60% in the summer, or from it going below 30 or even 20% in the winter. This chart is here to demonstrate that different object types have different preferences for their environment. And catering to these as much as possible can help reduce some of the risk and damage they might otherwise experience without any control or environmental consideration. Being within these ranges for as long as possible, of course, would help keep these objects around for as long as possible. Now that you know how temperature can affect relative humidity, try to be mindful of overheating or overcooling. And if you're curious about how temperature and humidity can each impact objects, be sure to check out another video, How Temperature and Humidity Affect Collection Items. Thank you for watching and please feel free to contact us with any questions that you might have.